What is up guys? We're back with another video and today we're going to be talking about Nvidia's RTX 4060 Ti. Now it launched last month and pretty much by all accounts people weren't all that happy with Nvidia when it comes to this card. So in this video we're going to be going over the card that we have from PNY. We're going to be talking about specs, benchmarks, performance, all of that stuff and see if this is actually worth picking up. So let's go ahead and take a look. So when it comes to the RTX 4060 series in general, it was just kind of interesting announcement and launch from NVIDIA. So they initially announced three different cards. So the card that we have here, of course, is the RTX 4060 Ti 8 gigabyte that is currently available and out. You can go ahead and pick it up. And then they announced an RTX 4060 Ti 16 gig. So this has 8 gig. Of course, the one that's going to come out in July is going to have 16 gigabytes of VRAM, but same, you know, GPU, same specs, everything like that, just different VRAM capacity. And then you have the RTX 4060, which again was announced at the same time. Now, this is based on a completely different GPU and will have completely different specs, but it will have eight gigabytes of VRAM, although that VRAM will be a bit slower. Now, going over the official specifications here of the RTX 4060 Ti, it's based off the 5 nanometer AD106, and it has 34 of the 36 streaming multiprocessors enabled on the chip, which is going to give you 4,352 CUDA cores, 34 RT cores, 136 Tensor cores, 136 TMUs, and 48 ROMs. Now the eight gigabytes of GDDR6 is actually running across a 128 bit memory interface, which feels just a little weird to say in uh, 2023 here. Now Nvidia is positioning this as their 1080p card. Now the card that PNY sent us over to check out is their Virtu card. Now this is their entry level card. It's gonna run at reference speeds and it will come in at that MSRP of 399. As we take a look at the card, it has a pretty much all black design. Now, for those wondering about length, it's about 245 millimeters or 9.65 inches long, which means it's going to be perfect for those smaller form factor builds if you wanted to go that route. The main shroud of the card is all black and has a pretty rectangular shape. There are a few different design elements separating the two cooling fans. Each has a PNY logo on it. As we take a look at the card from the side, we can see that it is indeed a two slot card and PNY is using a dual fin stack design with one heatsink over the GPU and another at the end of the card, which extends far past the PCB. These two heatsinks are connected by heat pipes. On the side of the card that's going to show, there is a PNY logo as well as a GeForce logo, but you won't find any RGB lighting. On this side of the card, you'll also find your power connection, which is a single eight pin PCI Express power connector. This is going to give the card a total of 225 watts of power draw. Flipping the card over to the back, we have a full metal backplate that also has the PNY and GeForce RTX logos on it. You will notice towards the end of the card, there is an opening. This allows air to flow through the card for more efficient cooling. Finally, we come to our display connections, which include three DisplayPort 1.4a and a single HDMI 2.1a. Now, when it comes to testing, here's a full breakdown of our test system.
Now, when it comes to the end here, I kind of just feel like, eh, when it comes to this card. I mean, it's, it, it, it kind of is what it is. I think a lot of people, when it comes to, you know, NVIDIA, they don't feel like they're getting that great price to performance ratio when it comes to this 60 series card. I think for me, it feels more like a 50 series card, really. Um, you know, but talking about that performance, you know, NVIDIA did market this as a 1080p card. And in our testing, you know, 1080p, we were well over 100 FPS, which I think is really good. And even going into 1440p, we were over 60 FPS in all of our, you know, tests as well, which I think is really good. You know, um, you are going to get things like DLSS3. And I think if you are upgrading from, say, something like a 10 series, having things like the RT cores and the Tensor cores is going to be really good because you never had those technologies before. And, you know, being able to experience real-time real ray tracing or turning on DLSS to get a lot higher frame rate is going to be something that you're definitely going to appreciate coming from the 10 series. But again, you know, if you compare this card to the 30 series card, it's only 10 to 15% faster without things like DLSS3. And, you know, it's two and a half years later. It's the same price. I just feel like gamers, they feel like they're not getting enough from NVIDIA. And then, you know, you have the three different cards in the 4060 series. The 16 gig card that's coming out later is $100 more expensive, which I have no clue how NVIDIA is justifying that price. Um, again, it just feels like NVIDIA, I don't know. It's, it just seems like it's all over the place, right? The 40 series has been all over the place. And that's just kind of what this feels like. Um, and again, if you're on that 30 series card, there's really no reason to upgrade it. Even at 20 series, you could sort of justify it. But again, at $400 for an 8 gig card with a 128 bit, uh, you know, memory interface in 2023, just, I don't know, just feels weird. You know, but for PNY's card, um, you know, for an entry level card, I do like it. It's strictly two slot, which I definitely like. Uh, the fans are very quiet. It has the full cover metal backplate and it has your standard 8 pin uh, connector here. So you don't have to worry about adapters or new power supplies or things like that. Um, so I do like this card from PNY. So if you have any questions about this card specifically, or the RTX 4060 Ti, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up. We'll see you guys in the next video.